Fermi estimates are a problem-solving method like none other. Most strategies for finding numerical answers, like experiments or precise research, do their best to achieve the highest level of precision possible, even if it takes extra thought, time, or effort. Fermi estimates flip this idea on its head. We can sacrifice the precision of our answer significantly, getting an effortless and quick answer in return. That sacrifice also allows abandoning the need for investigation and testing, letting prior knowledge carry the weight. Surprisingly, it is possible to reach a decent level of accuracy about difficult questions using no outside resources if done correctly. The essence of a Fermi estimate is that, rather than searching for a precise coefficient, we look towards the exponent in our final answer. This way, rather than ending up with a precise answer like 7.53 billion, we end up with an estimate that tells us the value is somewhere between 1 and 10 billion. Though at first, such a broad view seems useless, there are few key opportunities for it to shine. First and foremost, it can serve as a sort of reality check on more precise techniques. There's no use in having a more powerful instrument or method if the precise answers they give are completely unrealistic. Fermi estimates are an easy way to check if something has gone wrong. There are also cases where there is a choice between multiple different sophisticated methods, which work best under varying conditions. For example, there are a variety of techniques for particle simulations, each of which is designed for a particular quantity of particles. Doing a quick Fermi estimate can help decide which method to use when it is not clear. Finally, Fermi estimates aid learning concepts that are easier to understand when there are few complex factors to worry about. Due to their simpler nature, they can help make dimensional analysis clear, help grasp physical relationships, and give purpose to loose strings of knowledge we have. In a way, Fermi estimates make learning easier and more fun. Now, let's get into the strategies for finding Fermi estimates. Some estimates are easy enough to guess with no extra effort, so don't be afraid to do so if you know the answer. Often, this is where prior knowledge comes in, such as knowing the population of a particular country or having background knowledge on the size of some objects. Sometimes, something can be effortlessly measured on the spot with some precision, like the width of a room. Remember that, since the end goal is a general idea of magnitude, it's not necessary to know all the details of your answer. Other estimates are a bit more difficult, with no easy answer in sight, but the ideas are close enough to our knowledge that we can make a guess at the upper and lower bounds. For instance, you probably don't know off the top of your head how fast a bee flaps its wings. Yet, it is fairly obvious that it is more than 10 flaps and less than 1,000 flaps per second, since you can't hear individual flaps, but it also isn't a high-pitched ring. Combining our lower and upper bound, we can guess that, within an order of magnitude, a bee flaps its wings 100 times a second. As an aside, notice that we use the geometric, rather than the arithmetic mean, of the two bounds, preserving the focus on the magnitude of the answer and giving the lower bound as much impact as the upper one. Finally, most good questions are difficult enough that even bounding guesses are out of reach. For instance, few people know the mass of the sun or the earth off the top of their head, and when placing guesses, the difference between the bounds would be too massive to be useful. These kinds of questions are the most common ones, since those that are easier wouldn't need to be asked. In this case, the question is split into two or more slightly simpler ones, each of which can be approached on its own. They're either complex enough to be split again, or easy enough to be solved with one of the previous methods. As the questions continue being split, we end up with a multitude of simple estimates. Thus the impossible guess becomes reasonable, even if along the way the precision is lost. This question splitting process is where the majority of effort comes in. By wielding our human insights in the shape of formulas, we can take a single quantity and find a way to split it into ones that are easier to work with. Though extra strategies can be added, those are the key big ones. Using prior knowledge for answers you already have, guessing at bounds for answers you can infer, and dividing and conquering for answers you need to search for.